Why is there a hole here? Could it be that the ants did it? What if they're secretly planning an attack on human beings? Hmm, what will happen to the Big Mac? Elaine, does staring at the hole help you figure out the sphere volume? What class is it? Have you been paying attention at all? Have you? Because if you have, you would have known the answer yourself. Excuse me? Oh, wait. Nah, I still don't know. Sorry, what were you saying? This is going to be in the test. You need to focus if you- Oh, this is Japanese class. Duh. That's it. We're going to the principal's office. And that's the huge of my high school life. Hi, my name's Elaine, and I've been living with ADHD since... I don't know. But of course, ADHD manifests itself differently among different people. For me, I just gotta make sure I take my medication... Wait, where's my birth certificate? Anyway, make sure to like and subscribe before I continue. Right after the principal's office visit, I was walking down the hallway when a hunky guy purposely bumped into me, knocking my bag over. Dude, is that a dinosaur? Are you a kindergartner? <laughs> hey, that's my fidget toy. Give it back. Whoops, finders keepers. Who dares mess with my friend? It's Quinn, the Furious Queen. Run! The two guys immediately ran for their lives. Right then, Skylar and her new boyfriend also headed over. Isn't she the weirdo from the math class? Don't tell me you're friends with her. Yes, I am indeed. You can only choose one, her or me. How about I dump you instead? Get lost. And these are my girls. We've been best friends since forever and always got each other's backs. I forget my stuff a lot and Quinn always makes sure I got everything with me before leaving any place. While Skylar has me covered every time I dozed off in class. You know, I can't sleep at night because I'm busy thinking about the ants' earth destruction plan. Hmm, maybe they're the ones who terminated the giant dinosaurs. Wait, where was I? I don't know. Rewind the video yourself. Valentine's Day soon arrived. Even though Skylar just broke up with her boyfriend, she already had loads of presents from other guys. And so did Quinn. My girls are hot. What about you, Elaine? Nothing this year yet? Nah, I don't care. You guys are all I need. How about you make a move? Any guy you've laid your eyes on? Talk about making a move. When are you going to tell Cromer you've got the biggest crush on him? That's right. Give it a try today, Quinn. I, I don't care. I can get any guy if I want to. Right, suit yourself, girl. That afternoon, we were walking when we heard an announcement from the school's radio station. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Malcolm from iHeartRadio. Today, we got a special request from someone anonymous delivered to Elaine Miller. Love the way you stared at the hole on the desk that day in math class. It was so cute. I wish I could be that hole instead. Happy Valentine's Day. Someone's got a crush on you, Elaine. You've got a secret admirer. See, someone likes you for who you are. Always stay true to yourself. I wonder who this is. OMG, I gotta find out. But didn't you say you don't care? That's right. But now the game has changed. <laughs> who could it be? They mentioned math class, so they must attend the same class as we do. That's it. All we need is the attendance list from Mr. Wilson's office. But we can't go in there. Ever heard of mission I'm possible? Girls, it's showtime. After class, we waited for Mr. Wilson to leave his office. Then, just like totally spies, we crawled onto the floor, successfully avoided the security guard's gawking eyes, and managed to hide from one of the teachers passing by. Then continued secretly advancing toward Mr. Wilson's office. Oh, look! They got flaming hot Cheetos now! Elaine. Elaine! After we got the list, I immediately texted a bunch of people to test it out and anxiously waited. But some people replied calling me crazy. Others reported me to Instagram. I even got a visit from the police because they thought I was some creep sliding into people's DMs. Once they left, I immediately FaceTimed the girls. Hmm, from the list, there's still Malcolm you haven't texted. Isn't he working at the radio station with you, Skylar? Yeah, we are working together, but it can't be him. He never asked me about Elaine before. Who knows? You weren't working at the radio station today, were you? My money's on him, Elaine. What should I do? I can't send messages on Instagram anymore. How about writing to him? You know, the old-fashioned way. So I prepared a love letter for Malcolm and even designed a cute envelope for it. But then I got too invested in designing the envelope. I forgot all about the letter. When I finally remembered the letter, I walked all the way back for it. But of course, my ADHD brain had to mess it up again. Not until the day when Quinn and Skylar came over and I couldn't find my doctor's envelope anywhere did I realize I'd sent Malcolm my ADHD prescription instead of the letter. We immediately flew to Malcolm's house just as the mailman dropped off the prescription envelope out front. 
Seeing Malcolm walking out, I frantically ran to the other side of the street and started doing the craziest dance to get Malcolm's attention. Suddenly, I tripped and fell flat on my face. Malcolm rushed to help me up and got me inside his house. We chatted a bit as Malcolm worked on my arm. Elaine, right? We share a few classes together. We do? Yeah, you always sit near Quinn and Skylar, right? I saw you snoozing in class sometimes. Um, I guess so. Uh, look, Malcolm, did you give me the message on the radio? Ah, the confession. Well, it's not me. I'm not your secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I don't have a chance, do I? Skylar talks a lot about you, and I've always wanted to talk to you in person. Um, speaking of Skylar, it's our girls' night tonight. Bye! And thank you. I finally managed to calm my hyperactive heart down when I got back to my room. Is Malcolm the secret admirer? He's not. How embarrassing. See? Told you. We're pretty close. He would have told me already. But he seems to like me. Really? I mean, I saw the way he helped you up when you fell. It can't be. Let's focus on finding your real secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I can't hang out with Malcolm while finding my secret admirer. Turned out we both shared a passion for hip-hop. He can make super catchy beats for me to rap. Ahem, <laughs> just kidding. Animated story show wouldn't let me. Comment down below if you want a separate video of me rapping. Since then, we started hanging out more often. Malcolm is such a caring and patient person. Sometimes my ADHD kicked in and I cut him off while he was speaking, but he never got mad and just patiently waited for me to finish. Another time when I was blabbing nonstop about whatever was in my mind, I saw him counting. What are you counting for? How many times you switch topics within two minutes? Oh, sorry. No need to. I find it cute, actually. Later on, as we parted ways, I saw Skylar waiting for me, looking a little sad. Hey, what's wrong? I'm gonna be honest with you, because we promised each other. I've actually had a crush on Malcolm ever since we started working together at the radio station. What about your recent boyfriend? Oh, it was just a fling. I just can't stand seeing you with Malcolm. Anyway, don't take it personally. Sorry, I gotta go. Skylar had a crush on Malcolm? But I, I do enjoy being with him. No, sisters first. But it wasn't easy, as Malcolm would always try to approach me. It hurt having to stay away from him. Every time he got close, my heart would beat like crazy. But I also don't want to upset Skylar, as she started distancing herself from me and Quinn. I actually quite like Malcolm. This is so complicated. I honestly don't know what to tell you. How about you try finding your secret admirer? For real this time. He might be a better suit than Malcolm. The next morning, I found a note in my locker. From your secret admirer? They want to meet me near the fountain. But when I got there, I saw another note asking me to come to the bleacher. This better not be some silly prank. When I arrived, I was shocked to see Cromer sitting there by himself. He can't be behind the notes, right? Guess I'll find out now. Just a little closer. Closer. Suddenly, he looked up and stared straight into the camera. I was about to run when he caught me. Hey, Elaine Miller, right? You could have asked me for a picture. Didn't know you have a thing for me. No, no, I... I... It was an accident. Since then, I made sure to be more discreet to see if Cromer was the secret admirer. But man, it's like this guy got the sixth sense or something. Hey, what's wrong? You look nervous. It's because she likes me. She even tried to take pictures of me, right, Elaine? It's okay. I noticed you watching me recently. Come on, just admit it. I know I'm irresistible. <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know I like him. No, no, let me explain. You know, I even thought it was a misunderstanding between you and Skylar. But you know what? Now it seems like you just want to steal from us. Hey, guys, chill out. What's going on? You chill out. Do you even know Elaine said she liked Malcolm too? And now she's also taking Cromer. My Cromer. Hey, about Cromer, it's not what you think. And Malcolm, it's not like you and him are a thing. I have as much of an equal chance as you do, don't you think? Then why were you following him just then? And you even took pictures of him? And we're talking about our chance with Malcolm now? I, I, you know it's unfair to me. Unfair? We're always trying to make sure to put you first. But now you think you're the victim? I can't do this anymore. I hope you're happy you got both guys now, best friend. That was too much. They acted as if they took pity on me. I don't need anyone to look after me. I'm all fine by myself. Since we fell out, we're all caught up with our own things. Whenever I passed by Skylar, she just gave me a cold look. Quinn also seemed to have found new joys. I managed to get by just fine, but it felt like something was missing. One time, I was walking when I spotted Skylar and Malcolm surrounded by a crowd. 
turned out, Skylar confessed having a crush on Malcolm and asked him out, but he rejected her. The crowd couldn't miss the chance to mock her. Suddenly, I remembered how Skylar used to stand up for me, and I felt so bad for her. So, I decided to defend her this time, but she just ran out of there. I tried to catch up with her, but Skylar wouldn't listen. Suddenly, she crossed the street without looking, and a car came crashing into her. I frantically ran to check on her, and we immediately got her to the ER. Thank God she was fine. Just a couple bruises and scratches, but she refused to let me in. That night, I tried to call Quinn, but it kept sending me to voicemail. But I've made up my mind. I kept ringing her bell and insisted on waiting till she showed up. She finally gave in. Hey, I'm sorry for- Oh, you're sorry for me? No need to take pity on me. Just enjoy your happiness. Malcolm rejected me because he chose you. Happy much? Now just leave me alone, you ruthless, self-centered. Then she slammed the door shut in front of me, leaving me all stunned there. Ha, huh, what a show. This should totally be on Netflix. Kramer? Why are you here? I live right next door. So I see Skylar doesn't want to see you. But I do. Get off of me. I never liked you. Are you playing hard to get now, pretty little thing? Right then, Malcolm appeared out of nowhere and bolted to punch Kramer in the face. Didn't you hear what she said? Leave her alone. Can't believe Quinn and I are arguing because of you, creep. If only Quinn knew who her crush truly was. Quinn likes me? Huh. Could have told me earlier. What else is he up to? Anyway, thank you. Why are you here? I heard Skylar got into an accident right after the, uh, incident, so I wanted to pay her a visit. Now that you're here, I just want to let you know. Uh, actually, the one sending you the confession on the radio that day was Skylar. What? She just wanted you to feel loved and not left alone on Valentine's Day. I was going to give it some time before telling you, but things got complicated all too quickly. Anyway, now that you don't have to find out who your secret admirer is anymore, would you want to go out with me? As a girlfriend, I mean? Malcolm, I do like you a lot, but I just can't bring myself to hurting Skylar ever again. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. I understand. Guess I'll see Skylar another time then. I'm so sorry, Malcolm. Later, I arrived home to mom packing some boxes. Can you check if you still need these from the attic? Otherwise, they have to go. I opened up the boxes to find old pictures of me, Skylar, and Quinn inside, and I immediately burst into tears. We looked so happy together, like nothing could split us apart. That's right. We're sisters. I gotta make things right. The next day, after the first period, I came looking for Skylar. Gosh, I'm so anxious. Where's my fidget toy? What if Skylar's still mad at me? Looking for this? Y yes Skylar, I need to talk- Me too. I'm sorry, Elaine. Ugh, I was so hurt and embarrassed yesterday that I said nasty things to you. And you were right. I should have told you earlier I have a crush on Malcolm. But after everything, I realized how stupid I was and I don't want to lose you or lose us. Hey, me too. I couldn't sleep yesterday after hearing about everything from Skylar. I haven't been myself without you guys. Oh, me neither. You guys mean the world to me. It turned out Skylar also gave me the locker notes that day. She said she wanted me to give up on finding the secret admirer and Cromer just happened to be there. After that, I also told Quinn and Skylar about the fight between Cromer and Malcolm that night when Cromer himself showed up. Hey, Quinn, I just realized I've always liked you. I'm sorry your friend Elaine liked me, but you are my perfect match. Be my girlfriend, will you? Skylar and I immediately gave each other a worried look when Cromer, you know what Lady Gaga would say? Caught in a bad romance? I know I'm too handsome. You can't resist. She'd say, Women stick together, you jerk. Cromer immediately ran away in embarrassment. <laughs> what a loser. Oh, by the way, Malcolm left to study abroad today and he sent his goodbye to you. I feel so bad about you and Malcolm. It's okay. Right person, wrong time. From then on, us three were always by each other's side and graduated together. We even went to the same college now and made sure we go to every party together. One night at a music festival, I was waiting for Skylar and Quinn to get back from the restroom when they started playing Kendrick Lamar. Hip-hop would always remind me of someone now. Suddenly, a handkerchief was handed to me. I saw you from afar. Is this the right time to get your number now? Hi, I'm Aubrey, a super smart girl with an IQ of 200, and you should be ready for my mind-blowing story. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I grew up in a small village in the countryside where people farm for a living. 
My family struggled to put food on the table so I could only attend a monastery school. But since childhood, I've always been kind of different. The system is crashing. Please wait for a moment. The chicken is $15.55 minus 15%. Cereal is $2.49. Potatoes, laundry detergent. So the total comes to $64.85 with the discounts and tax included. Mom soon realized I was a gifted child, so she helped me skip some grades. And by the age of five, I was already doing secondary school math. I always topped my classes and other students would bribe me with candies to ask for help with their homework. At the age of eight, I scored 760 on the SAT math and won the spelling bee competition. I became a phenomenon in the area, and reporters even gave me the Stanford Bennett IQ test, which showed I had the same intelligence as a 22-year and 11-month-old person. My parents were super proud of me, especially my dad. Dad, they all gave me Lego and comics for rewards, as if I was an eight-year-old. Yeah, yeah, they're wrong. You're eight years and five months old already, little lady. He was the only one who could spark interesting conversations with me. That is, until he felt terribly ill. But good surgeons were nowhere to be found in this remote countryside, and we couldn't afford to take him to the center either. We were desperate to see a situation get worse and worse. Then he passed away, leaving us in the depths of despair. Soon after, Mom couldn't afford my school fees anymore, so I had to drop out. Aubrey, I'm so sorry. Don't worry, Mom. There's nothing that school can teach that I can't learn by myself. So she signed me up for a library membership, and turned out the best memories I cherished were here, where I could immerse myself in interesting knowledge from all around the world. I was walking down the aisle, absentmindedly running my fingers along the spines of the books, when one caught my eye and the memories of my dad rushed back to me. If he had been operated on, he'd not have lost. I started turning the first few pages and was captivated immediately. Then suddenly, a fiery desire sparked in my heart. I want to become a surgeon. So I studied every medical book I could find, especially the ones from this author, and decided to save money to enter medical school as soon as possible. To get closer to my dream, I moved out to the city and applied for a job at a coffee shop right next to the medical school. Only... You've broken 10 plates this week already. Are you trying to break a record? Come on, boss. It's just some plates. Not like I burned the whole shop or something. This will be deducted from your salary. Repeat this and you'll be fired. Okay, that's my fault, but I knew he wouldn't fire me. There's no one else who could memorize so many orders all at once. Even Diner Dash Master. Later, I was going to serve a group of students when I heard they were discussing an emergency case. We have to remove that blood clot in segment four of the liver and flush the left lobe. Definitely have to start at the middle hepatic vein. Is this dude serious? Absolutely not. A less intrusive cut would be along the falciform ligament to allow access to segment three. Everyone fell silent and looked at me like I was an alien. Suddenly, the middle-aged man among them stood up. Nice work, young lady. Your method is much more efficient than my student's answer. Which class are you in? Oh, I'm not a medical student but I aspire to be one day. The man asked me to sit down and continued asking me other medical questions, and I answered them all with ease. My adrenaline was rushing. Since my dad passed away, I hadn't had such an interesting discussion. Then, a few days later, the man came back and revealed that he was Dr. Sean Lewis and the principal of the medical school. OMG, you're my favorite author! I admire you so much! Thank you, young lady. Anyway, I came here today with an offer. I was impressed by the knowledge you have in the medical field, and I think you deserve a full expense scholarship to the most prestigious medical school. Can someone pinch me now? This was truly a blessing from heaven that I would definitely not let slip away. Here comes my first day. I went to school extra early to explore as much of the campus as possible. This place was so much bigger and better equipped than my old school. I was looking around the hallway to find my class when someone bumped into me. Oh, isn't it the gave the wrong answer guy at the cafe? He just coldly said sorry and hastily headed to the class over there. 412? It's my class too. I learned that he was Henry, the top student of the class. But obviously he wasn't that good. They'll see. All the theoretical classes didn't make me break a sweat, and I even spotted some mistakes made by the professors. When lunch rolled around, I went to the cafeteria, approaching the first group that caught my eye, and they seemed to be friendly. Want some of my fries? Potato fries contain a high amount of trans fat, which is associated with type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. One day you'll have a stroke, and then you'll know why. Thank me later. They all pouted and left right away. Did I say something wrong? Right then, a nice girl came to me. I'm Laura. Mind if I sit? Sure. 
Then she told me she was isolated too, just because she wasn't as smart as the other students here. Why are they so mean? Hey, why you gotta be bothered by those toxic people? Do they give you a penny for your thoughts? It's not about how many friends you make, it's about finding one that knows your worth. You're right. I'm Aubrey, by the way. I know, I was in the same class with you this morning. And the way you argue with our professor? Wow, that's impressive. Laura and I quickly became friends. It's great to have her around, who could truly see my brilliance and always encouraged me to express myself. Today came a big event. A conference was held by none other than Dr. Lewis. But little did I know that this event would become a battleground between Henry and I. Determined to impress Dr. Lewis, I eagerly raised my hand at every opportunity to answer his inquiries. Each time I did, Henry would swiftly raise his hand as well, competing for Dr. Lewis's attention. We argued back and forth, neither backing down until the end of the conference. After that, Dr. Lewis announced that there was one slot available in his upcoming research project, which would go to the top student of this term. The room buzzed with excitement and anticipation. My heart skipped a beat, for working with Dr. Lewis had been a lifelong dream. However, other students started cheering Henry's name. Jeez, I swore I would beat his butt off and show them who deserved it. Time to prove that I was not only unmatched in theory, but also in practice. I was the very first one to finish stitching up the incision. Uh-huh. But as I reached for my gauze, I couldn't find it anywhere. It must be around here, I swear. Oh no, I left it inside the dummy. Okay, this time must be better. How hard could it be to use this defibrillator? But then I accidentally touched the metal pad and got shocked and fell backward. I kept trying in many other practice sessions, but that sucked. Aubrey, this cast looks exactly like a chicken thigh. Do it again. But the most annoying thing was that Henry excelled in all of them and other students started mocking me. After that, I went outside for some fresh air and deep down, I was so disappointed in myself for all my failures. Suddenly, a hand gently patted my shoulder. It was Laura. I couldn't help but hug her and start sobbing. Laura, what if I was wrong about myself? I failed at everything and people started humiliating me. Oh, they just envy you. Nobody can beat your academic scores. That's why they gloated at your failure in practice. But that big brain of yours is what matters the most, right? Yeah? And an opportunity is coming your way. There is an intelligence contest next week. If you win, everyone will have to recognize that you're the best, including Henry. Talk about Laura, my savior. I'll try my best. Just wait and see. A few days later, Laura took me to the library in a private study room. She helped me set up my laptop and left me alone so I could focus. Good luck. I participated in an online oral contest over Skype. There was a panel of judges who asked questions, and all I had to do was answer them verbally. Easy peasy. Now I just need to wait for the results. The next day, I went to school as usual, but then suddenly was called to the principal's office. Dr. Lewis might have known about that competition and saw my name on the top list. I was about to brag about my performance when he accused me of helping other students cheat on their exam. Then he showed me a voice recording of me answering the questions. Wasn't that for the intelligence contest? But Laura said, Dr. Lewis, just wait. I can explain. I frantically called Laura, but she refused to pick up. Enough. I'm so disappointed in you. You're expelled from this moment. Feeling lost and crushed, I trudged myself to a bench in the schoolyard. Hey, are you okay? Okay? You're mocking me? Now that project slot is yours. Happy much? Get out of my sight now! Suddenly a stack of papers fell onto my lap. You might need this. Good luck. I believe you're not a cheater. I confusedly flipped through those papers to see that these were all of Henry's notes from the semester for practice lessons, which could not be found in normal textbooks or lectures. I kept on turning to the last page and saw a scribble. Know your worth. Something awakened inside me, so I swallowed my pride and ran after Henry. Hey, wait! I I've been wrong about you the whole time. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's my fault to act competitively, too. I had no bad intentions. It was just the motivation for me to study harder. I swear. But it's a pity if the medical industry loses someone like you. Um, well, I'm not so sure anymore. I'm used to doing everything so quickly and I can't be patient, which probably explains my clumsiness. That I can help with. Genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work, you know. Since then, I often went to Henry's house to practice. We studied together and he taught me many tips to stay calm, patient, and focused. And turns out, he's also quite the adorable type. Here you go!
Thank you, doctor. This is the best stitch I've ever had. One day, I ran into Laura at a gas station. She tried to hide, but I ran straight there to catch her. How could you trick me like that and just disappear like nothing happened? I'm so sorry, Aubrey. I was so blind and just wanted to help those who are bad at studying like me. I never expected it to be that serious and you'd get expelled. And now, why are you here? It's just the medical profession was not my thing, so I quit. But Aubrey, please forgive me. I'm really ashamed of what I did and you were the only one who had truly been kind to me. <sighs> only when you set things straight and confess everything to Dr. Lewis. But even so, there isn't a likely chance we'll be friends again. So the next day, Henry took Laura and I to see Dr. Lewis. Aubrey, Laura, what are you both doing here? Dr. Lewis, I... I was the one behind the cheating case. Aubrey had no idea and didn't deserve to be punished for my fault. I've been practicing a lot too, sir. Look at these. I've been so careful with every single one. Aubrey has also helped me a lot in our project. I hope you can forgive her and grant her another chance. Dr. Lewis looked quite satisfied, but then he suddenly turned pensive and shook his head. Medical school is not where people can freely join and leave. A doctor needs an extra sharp mind and can be fooled as easily as you were. I'm sorry, Aubrey, but you're not qualified. My heart sank to my toes and I locked myself inside my apartment for the next couple of days. It wasn't until Henry knocked at my door that I actually went outside. He said he wanted to cheer me up and bring me to his favorite restaurant. I sat down waiting while Henry went to get the drinks. Hey! But a second later, he slipped on the stairs and fell down with a thud with all the broken glass scattering around. It's all right. I, I think I only twisted my ankle. Not a big deal. But my stomach dropped when I noticed a trail of blood on the floor and something protruding from his ankle. A large shard of glass. I swiftly dialed a 911 while Henry winced in pain. Aubrey, you have to administer first aid. Oh, right. I called for the restaurant staff to get the first aid kit, but it was clear that the situation was dire. Henry's face grew pale as blood continued to trickle from the wound. I held the wound closed to stop the blood, but my heart felt weak. I couldn't bear to see him suffer. You trust me, Henry? What do you mean? Yes? So I immediately pulled out the toolkit that I brought around in my purse. Henry bit down on the tablecloth beside us, and I started the procedure. I maintained a steady stream of chatter, trying to distract him from the pain, but it wasn't helping. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What? Just to distract myself from the pain. Okay, go ahead. Stand a little taller. And done. When I looked up, there was a crowd cheering in awe and admiration. Guys, I caught the whole thing live. The video of the incident quickly went viral. That night, I tossed and turned in bed, unable to contain my excitement. I saved a human life. Reading the comments of the video filled me with a renewed sense of motivation to pursue my dream. The following morning, I was jolted awake by a notification on my phone. It was an email from Dr. Lewis himself. I headed to Dr. Lewis's office, and to my surprise, he told me he saw the video and gently said, Aubrey, I was once like you, arrogant and overly reliant on my natural intelligence. Then, a mistaken surgery left me with regret that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. However, after watching the video, I'm glad that you changed. I saw your humility and eagerness to learn, so I'll give you another chance. So, here I am. You have no idea how much I miss this hallway. Welcome back. How's your ankle doing? Much better, thanks to you. How about a celebration dinner tonight? Sounds great, but promise you won't need me to operate on you again. I was scared to death. Ahead of me still lay a long road, but I believe the day I become a skilled surgeon is closer than ever. And soon I can perform more life-saving surgeries for the less fortunate. Dad, I will make you proud. Hi there, I'm Anita, a science pro and robotics prodigy. I've won countless trophies, including one for making a talking replica of BB-8. But it's my crush's heart that I can't win. Tom has just refused to accompany me to the last middle school dance. But who cares? I've got my bestie Barb. It'll still be fun. We can go together. We arrived at the dance to find that everyone had dates, except for us. Well, this is a little awkward. Move. This is a dance floor, grannies. Either you dance or get out. I bet this is the first party you've ever got to attend. As if Tom would go out with such a loser. Yeah, you should try asking your robots out instead. 
As they walked off laughing, I felt so disheartened. Barb told me not to listen to them, but their words niggled away at me. I realized if I didn't change, then I'd waste the rest of my teen years by being a loser that got left out of all the fun. I needed to reinvent myself now before it was too late. Over the summer break, I thought it over and realized that there was only one way forward. I should flip the script, where nobody knew who I was. And this is the perfect occasion for that. High school! I purposely chose a school that's across the city. It's a bit inconvenient, but that's how to be sure I'd not run into anyone from my local middle school. Of course, except for Barb. She's going there with me also. Hey, recognize me? I'm still Anita. Like my new look? I've had a style update, ditched my glasses and all the uncool geeky stuff. Ooh, let's surprise my bestie. <laughs> Anita? Whoa, talk about a Captain Marvel transformation. Gee, thanks. This hair color is so in season right now. Hang on, you look just like Chelsea. Oh, do I? How funny. You sound like her too. Okay, so Chelsea was this popular girl from middle school. Um, yeah, I may have spent all summer studying her. All right, I actually mirrored her style and mannerisms. I'm just learning to better myself. This isn't any different from using humans as models when programming a robot. Besides, it's not like Chelsea's here to mind. Speaking of robots, how's your BB-8? No, that's my past. We'll never be cool and get boyfriends if our peers think we're nerds. Come with me after school. I'll give you a makeover too. It's okay, Anita. I don't mind being a nerd. But if this makes you happy, then you have my full support. My sweet, naive Barb has no idea how incredible being cool would be. They are the cool kids here, aka celebrities. They're so dazzling and popular. And oh my god, who's that? He's so dreamy. So, I confidently strutted over to introduce myself to the whole group when... <sighs> Luckily, no one seemed to notice my fall, or they just didn't care. <sighs> Anyways, this was only my first day here. I had loads of time to fit in with the celebrities, and then catch that hottie, who supposedly named Eric's attention. At first, the popular girls didn't notice me, but then a few days in, Lou, the celebrity's leader, had a lipstick emergency and I sprung to her rescue. See? I told you, this burgundy shade really pops against your cool undertone. Ruby Woo? That's so 2015, Ashley. You can put that away. And easy peasy, I became part of the group. They invited me to their parties, shopping trips, and spa days. It's like entering a completely new world. An extra shiny one. I got to sit with them at lunch where they ubered low-calorie food. Normally, I had the same as them, but today my mom packed me a special sandwich with the moist maker, just like Ross's from Friends. Sorry, guys, but Anita doesn't share food. <laughs> Are you seriously going to drink that? You can practically see the fat and lactose swirling in it. Gross. Oh, okay. Looks like the moist maker would have to wait. I looked around and saw Barb sharing her mom's amazeballs mac and cheese with her new geeky friends. I've not spoken to Barb properly in weeks. We kept trying to reschedule as I had manicures with Lou, Haley's party, and all these other after-school shopping trips. Which kept getting so expensive. Aren't you gonna buy that? You haven't bought anything. Um, that's because I only wear tailor-made clothes made of Egyptian cotton or at least silk linen. Um, okay. In that case, you can be our assistant. Make sure you wear a cute cardigan tomorrow for a OOTD Instagram post. Ashley has made a list of the available colors. That's why I had to use all of my allowance on this cardigan. But it's fine. That's just how popular clicks had to be. And it's so nice of them to let me hang around. I proudly strutted alongside the celebs, looking just like one of them. Other students gawped at us, and it sure felt good. But suddenly, this dizzy spell came over me. I started shaking and feeling cold, then pitch black. I woke up in the infirmary to Barb's worried face. Oh good, you're awake. It's no surprise you passed out. You aren't eating enough. What? I'm eating just fine. Besides, skinny is chic. I'm not arguing with you. You're lucky your head didn't hit the floor thanks to Eric. Eric saved me? He must have caught me like in a romantic movie. This diet is amazing. I wouldn't have been in Eric's arms without it. Later, I tried to thank him, but he put his headphones on and walked off. And I never saw him at any of the celebs' parties or anything. A hot guy like him is probably hanging out with an even cooler clique and interested in even more popular girls. I need to try harder. But my geeky side wasn't going to stay suppressed. One time, this guy slated Spider-Man 2099, my favorite character ever. Dude doesn't understand how the multiverse works, and his suit sucks. Are you kidding me? As if you know how it works, his suit incorporates Parker tech and has stealth features and exploding spider saucers. Okay, cool it, new girl. It's just some weirdo jumps around in spandex. Right, be cool. Cool kids didn't geek out over superheroes. 
Luckily, everyone else seemed distracted. I turned to look and saw them already flocked around some new kid with a huge backpack, a comic t-shirt, and jeans. Huh, it's like looking at middle school me. When I managed to get a closer look, I almost fell over in shock. It was Chelsea! Why would pretty popular Chelsea do a total 180 on her looks? I tried to avoid Chelsea, but then one time when I was trying to approach Eric, she appeared and he actually spoke to her. Does Chelsea know Eric? Since when? How come? Ah! Time stopped as I stared into his big dreamy eyes, but falling for each other again? <laughs> he might as well just stay in his arms. I quickly walked away and passed Chelsea. Our eyes met. Did she recognize me? She didn't say anything, but was that a smirk I saw? I needed to find out if Chelsea really recognized me, so I turned to Barb. It was a bit awkward, as we hadn't spoken in a while. But luckily, Barb was cool about it and said she'd try to find out. We chatted a bit, and then she asked me, We are still going to Comic-Con on the 7th, right? Yeah, of course. Can't wait. I was excited about Comic-Con until... A few days later, the celebrities had a big announcement. They were attending Conan Gray's concert on the 7th. Are you coming, or do you have some tragic nerdy convention to go to? Huh? That's oddly specific. I panicked and said yes to the concert. We had to give money to Asher the next day, and she would take care of purchasing everyone's tickets. But thanks to that overpriced cardigan, how am I supposed to afford this? Hmm, I guess there was one way to pay for it. Me and Barb's Comic-Con fund, which we'd been saving since middle school. I was only borrowing and would definitely pay it back. The following day, the celebs gathered to discuss the concert. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flustered-looking Barb. What about our plan? Did you just spend all your savings on some concert you don't even care about? I'm sorry, I promise I'll pay you back. I just needed some time. So, you spent my share too? How could you? I felt terrible. I never meant to upset my friend like that. I just really wanted to fit in. Only, after that day, I found myself miserable with the celebs. The more time I spent with them, the more things about them got me second-guessing this group's dynamic. For instance, they talked a lot about the importance of being eco-friendly, but ordered Uber Eats almost every day, and constantly brought new, cute, reusable straws in Stanley Cups. Moreover, it was always lose weight or the highway, and they even trash-talked their own group members behind their backs. I found myself often looking around for Barb and then feeling extra guilty. On my way home, I was dragging my feet, feeling awful, when I passed an appliance store. I saw some students from my school's robotics team struggling with their droid, so I gladly offered a hand. If you want my lunch money, take it, but please leave Gears Brosnan alone. We worked hard on it. I tried explaining that I just wanted to help, but they kept pushing me away. I stared down at myself and realized that I wasn't welcomed because I'd given up everything to look like a celebrity. However, I didn't feel like one. I'd stood by and let the celebs push everyone else around. Was this really the life I wanted? That weekend was supposed to be spa day with the celebs, so I went out to the mall to ask Lou for my concert ticket. I was going to sell it and pay Barb back. Only when I got there, I saw Chelsea with them, but she looked like her cool self again. Uh-oh, I better go. But too late, Chelsea caught me and told everyone. Guys, look who's here. Fun fact, Anita and I used to be friends back in middle school. Cover yourself in foundation all you want, but your nerdiness will still show. Everyone started laughing, and that's when it dawned on me. They were all in on Chelsea's plans to expose me. I wanted to leave, but I still needed my ticket back. Sure, you can have it back, but on one condition. Wash off your Chelsea disguise and go back to being pathetic little you again. And so they told me to wash my hair in this decorative basin in a lush store before everyone's confused eyes and their live streaming cameras. I swallowed my pride and did it for Barb. But afterward, Lou turned back on her word. Actually, I gave it to Chelsea. Tough luck. Oops, too bad I never agreed to the deal Lou made with you. I felt overcome with panic and shame. I ran and I bumped into someone. Eric! Seeing how upset I was, he took me for coffee and a chat. As soon as we sat down, I burst into tears and told him how I'd lost everything. My popularity, dignity, friends. It all started to fall apart when Chelsea turned up all of a sudden, and then the domino effect took over. Chelsea? I'd always known she's catty, but I never thought she'd go that far. How can you be friends with her? <laughs> what? No, it's not what you think. You still don't recognize me? What do you mean, recognize? Then he revealed that he was from my middle school. I was shooketh! But if I squinted real hard, I guess he did look vaguely familiar. Whoa, puberty hit you like a truck. Same for you. Yeah, no, it wasn't puberty for me. 
I got emotionally scarred from being an outcast and became afraid of missing out on cool stuff, so I turned myself into a Chelsea clone to be popular. That's insane. But if it means anything, I prefer the old you. It's great seeing you at the school, but when I saw that you changed and joined the celebs, I was kinda apprehensive. But for real though, I would have died for you to notice me. I was beyond surprised. He liked me all along? Suddenly, Chelsea jumped in. Why has it always been her? I changed myself to look like her. Didn't you say you liked nerdy girls? So why not me? Say what? Chelsea liked Eric? So she really copied my look. And for that reason? I'm sorry, Chelsea, but it's my feelings. I can't believe you rejected me twice for this little nerd, and she doesn't even look like herself anymore. Chelsea, it's never been about looks. It's about who she is. In the midst of it, I finally understood something. I was fine just being me. I never needed to be anything else. I've switched schools and turned myself into a dork for you! Ah! You're lucky this time! I watched Chelsea stomp out. I realized how I was constantly anxious and on edge that I'd messed up while hanging out with the celebrities. I missed the truly happy moments with real friends where I could just be me. All this time, I thought I'd been missing out on all the fun, but turns out, I missed nothing. The true way to have beautiful teenage years is to spend it with people that really appreciate you and do the things that you actually enjoy. I thanked Eric, then left. There was something important I needed to do first. I went home and fixed my BB-8, then took it over to Barb's house. Sorry, Barb. I'm so sorry, Barb. I was so desperate to be cool that I overlooked what really mattered. I miss you and our friendship so much. I missed you too, and I saw that humiliating video and just wanted to know you were okay. On second thoughts, I'll forgive you if you give me your BB-8. <laughs> no can do, as I'm selling it online to make money to pay you back. I only brought it here to make my apology more meaningful. Did it work? We both hug. The next few days at school, I tried my best to fix things. I returned to my old image, well, with a slight upgrade. I can't let my beauty skills go to waste now. And I dug out all my geeky stuff. I showed up at the robotics club, and this time, I confidently strode over and immediately fixed their robot. I told you I could help. Don't judge a book by its cover. That's a celebrity's job. Look at you, all happy and smiley with your own loser nerd kind. Yeah, I'm happy, while you once tried and failed to be one of us, remember? Being a nerd isn't just about appearance, it's about what's inside. By the way, how was the concert? I heard your fanatic behavior got you kicked out. Sounds exciting. Chelsea and the celebs looked fuming as they sashayed off, but I didn't care, as I was finally back where I belonged. I was at the fish market, busy selling some crabs to a customer, when I turned around and saw this guy stealing our fish. He quickly ran away. I grabbed a stone, aiming it at the thief, but suddenly a guy appeared and it hit him instead. Hey, what was that? Let go of me! Shouldn't you at least apologize? I looked over and the thief was nowhere to be found. The thief's escaped! You should apologize! But the guy just frowned and huffed off. Hi, I'm Serena, and I was brought up here, in this picturesque fishing town. When I was little, I lost mom and dad to the sea, so grandma raised me. We couldn't afford school for me. Instead, I helped grandma sell fish at the market to make ends meet. But things weren't always easy. Serena, you all right? Yes, I just wish people wouldn't steal. I know. Hopefully it was an extra stinky fish that will give them a tummy ache. That's Edward, my best friend since childhood. Edward's parents are also fishermen, so we naturally bond together and grew up inseparable. Later, Edward and I were busy closing when I heard murmurs and saw Mr. Elbridge, the fishing enforcement officer. Anyone caught poaching striped bass will be given a hefty fine. What? You gotta be kidding me! Sir, it's only considered poaching if they were caught out of season, which they're not! Oh, really? Do you have the legal documentation to overpower my decision? Nope. Thought as much. He's obviously abusing his power. At home, I told Grandma everything that had happened at the fish market. I know it's not fair, sweetie, but maybe one day you could study, become an amazing lawyer, and help the local fishermen. I want to help. I can tutor you if you'd like. That's brilliant! Since then, Edward stayed true to his word and tutored me. He was smart, kind, and so patient in explaining things to me. Time flies, and by the time I turned 13, I had the biggest crush on Edward, but I had no clue how he felt about me. I'll wash up. In the future, I'll always share the housework with you. What does he mean by that? Does he also have feelings for me? The next day, when Edward and I were having ice cream, some kids came in and started making fun of me. Do you know eating too much ice cream makes you fat? Oh, of course you don't, because you don't go to school. <laughs> she doesn't need to. She's still far smarter than you'll ever be. Why did you always stick up for me? Is it because you think of me as a... as a... As a little sister? I need to stop daydreaming. 
he doesn't have those kinds of feelings for me. Then, when I turned 17, something terrible happened. Grandma felt so sick that she passed away. At the funeral, I felt so alone with all the adults around, and Edward was nowhere to be seen. When everything was settled, Uncle Leon said he'd take me to live with his family in the city. I had to tell Edward, but when I got to his house, it was all locked up. So I quickly slid a note with my uncle's address under his door, then left for the city. As soon as we walked into the mansion, and Clara and Rachel were already there, frowning. Ugh, can you smell rotting fish? Ew, uh, get yourself some perfume, please. Enough, you will make Serena feel welcome here. Please prepare a nice room and everything Serena needs. Uh-oh, not a good start. But then Uncle Leon had to go away for a business trip and asked Aunt Clara to find me a tutor as he was afraid going to school might be a shock for me. I was so excited to finally study and pursue my lawyer dream. However, all the tutors Aunt Clara found were terrible. I actually had to teach them simple sums. Meanwhile, Aunt Clara showered me with errands to run. Suddenly, I saw a blur of a dog and boy and... Smash! You idiot! How am I meant to cycle home with an injured knee? You're hearing this, Rex? How is she gonna cycle back home? S sorry I'll take you home. I accepted his offer, mainly because I didn't exactly have much choice. What's your number? Well, that was quick. Stop daydreaming. I need it in case I decide to sue you. The guy, Henry, finally quit fooling around and gave me his number. When we got to the mansion, I caught sight of a familiar figure. Edward! I limped over and looped my arms around him. Who are you? Before I could respond, Henry shrugged his shoulders, then left. Edward then told me all about the tragic events that had happened to him. My father made a bad decision to go dynamite fishing. The Coast Guard caught him, but as he tried to run away, his boat smashed into a reef. We needed to move to the city for his treatment. Luckily, I got a scholarship into college here, so I can study and also care for Dad. I'm so sorry it's taken me this long to find you. That's okay, I understand. It all sounds terrible. What about you? So you live in that big mansion now? Is that guy your boyfriend? Henry? Oh, no, no. He's just good because, well, I wanted to tell you that I missed you and I love you, Serena. B but you said I'm just a sister to you. I was 13. I didn't understand my feelings back then, but I do now. Serena, not having you by my side felt so empty. Will you be my girlfriend? We started dating and having Edward by my side felt so great. I was complaining about my terrible tutors when Edward suggested he become my tutor instead. That's a great idea. You'll need to prepare an atrocious CV for my aunt to hire you. And it worked. I don't expect you to get very far with this one. She is rather dumb. What's the deal with you two? She doesn't like having me here. Halfway through the lesson, Edward got a call from the hospital asking him to pay his dad's bills ASAP before his condition worsened. I was comforting him when Rachel barged in. Serena, go get me some ice. Oh, hello there. Get out! Who's that? Rachel, my cousin. Edward seemed distracted after that. I guess he was upset about his dad. He told me to continue with my worksheet and went to the bathroom. I finished the work, but Edward still hadn't returned. Was he lost in this massive house or something? I went to look for him and was shocked to see him and Rachel happily laughing together. Hi, Serena. I was just getting some water. I ignored Edward and continued studying by myself. Are you jealous? I was just being polite. Darn it, he knew I couldn't be mad at him when he smiled at me like that. But as we continued studying, I couldn't fully shake away my uneasy feeling. But the next day, I was waiting to study with Edward when Edward won't be coming today. What? I asked her why, but she just walked off. As she left, I heard her ask the maid to bring fruits to Rachel and her new tutor. Huh? Since when did Rachel have a tutor? Sensing something was up, I sneaked over to Rachel's room and spotted... Edward? Serena, what are you doing over here? Oh, is stalking your new hobby now? I looked at Edward, but he just sat still, so I ran off with blurry eyes and an aching heart. Edward tried to call me, but I just ignored it. That night, he texted me and insisted on waiting for me. I wanted to hear him out, but I was still so angry at him. Serena, please. Your aunt told me I couldn't tutor you anymore and asked me to be Rachel's tutor instead. I need the money for my dad's treatment. I can't turn this amount of money down. Ugh, my aunt was such a witch. I'm so sorry. I would much rather be tutoring you. You're the only girl for me, but I can't lose this job. So let's keep our relationship a secret, okay? This was no big deal, right? It was me he wanted, not Rachel. Edward's birthday soon arrived, and we have a date at this restaurant today. I was excited when my phone buzzed. Sorry, babe, something's come up. Can't make it, X. It must have been something super important for him to cancel like that.
But on my way home, I passed another restaurant and couldn't believe my eyes. Edward and Rachel were sitting together. Rage swarmed over me, and before I could stop myself, I charged in there. Edward, how could you? Jeez, what's up with you? He's not even your tutor anymore. Ask him how long he's known me for. Uh, I was just your tutor, that's all. I couldn't believe this, so I stormed off. I felt like such a fool for ever believing his lies. While running in tears, I bumped straight into Henry. You look like you just got dumped. <laughs> it was the straw that broke the camel's back, so I started crying louder. It's not me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Please stop crying. Anything you want. Anything. How about the aquarium? It turns out the aquarium was just what I needed. Watching the fish was so relaxing, and Henry was surprisingly a lot of fun to be around. Your parents must be super easygoing to put up with you. Nope, my lawyer mom is way opposite. Oh wow, that's cool. It's my dream to be a lawyer. Is that so? My school's interviewing for a law foundation course. You should apply. A law foundation course, huh? Should I give it a try? I arrived home feeling better, but Aunt Clara wouldn't leave me alone with her usual mocking routines. You spoiled ingrate. Soon you'll be 18 and I can rid my hands of you. I had enough. So I decided to apply for the foundation program Henry mentioned. It was time to focus on my dream without any further distractions. I studied hard and went to the library for materials. Henry offered to help, and even though I still found him childish sometimes, he was actually quite smart and knew loads about the law. One time, Henry invited me to come watch his debate team. Only, when I showed up and spoke to Henry, I saw Edward walk in. My dad's ill, yet here you are, with him? Serena can go where she pleases. It's okay, Henry. I got it. Rachel's just my friend. I love you, not her. I just need to earn enough money. Then I'll end this mess with Rachel for good. What he did was still hard to accept, but he was in a tough situation. I would be a terrible girlfriend if I didn't support him, right? Despite all this drama, I'd been studying hard, and now it was time for my interview. Only, on my way there, I saw a woman yelling at two students. Watch where you're going, you idiots! Excuse me, but this is a pedestrian crossing, hence the driver's fault for not stopping. How dare you speak the law to me, you little girl! Do you know who I am? But as everyone started buzzing, she had no choice but to drive off. <sighs> what happened? I explained it to him and pointed at the woman's car. He didn't say anything, but seemed quite surprised. We then went to the interview, but when I told the assistant my name, she smiled and said, You don't need to draw a number. Mrs. Shodden was impressed with your profile, so she wishes to interview you herself. It's best you follow the right procedure. I was a bit confused, but Henry knew better than me. Anyway, I had my interview with someone else, and I passed. Yay! Since then, I studied hard, and Henry helped me a lot. On my first oral exam, he even came along to encourage me. Only, as soon as I stepped into the room, I saw that rude woman standing there. Hang on, she's the judge! Nerves wriggled at me, but I kept calm and nailed the exam. But afterward, she charged over to me. Don't expect to pass from me, you manipulative girl, seducing my son to get into this college. Huh? Her son? Who? Mom, you can't do that. The exam's recorded. They'll see you're just being prejudiced. I insist you cut ties with a schemer at once. She humiliated me in front of a crowd and tried to smudge my impeccable reputation. No, she didn't. She was just telling the truth. Oh, and that day, I purposely called her in for an interview, but turned out you intervened. And ever since then, this snake was following you everywhere. So end it at once or leave. So this woman is Miss Shodden? And worse still, she's Henry's mom? Suddenly, Henry grabbed my hand and led me out of there. How dare you! You're ungrateful and spoiled! I only adopted you so I had someone to look after me in my old age. But you know what? You'll never be my son! Don't forget to take your meds twice a day. Seeing him talk back to his mother just to defend me, I couldn't help but ask, Henry, why did you help me so much? It's because mom was in the wrong, and seeing you getting pushed around hurts me a lot. Why, Henry? Because I like you a lot. Let me be there for you. Um, Henry, your mom shouldn't have spoken to you like that, but she was only angry because she cares about you. You should talk to her. I really hope things will turn out fine between them. Henry dropped me home, and now all I could think about was his love confession. To be honest, I do have feelings for Henry, but what about Edward? What about our years spent together? Suddenly, I got a text from Edward, asking to meet up. I guess it was time to sort this out. While waiting for Edward to order ice cream, I got a message from Henry, saying he was coming to my place for some great news. I asked him to come pick me up instead. This reminds me of our fishing village in summer and getting ice creams at the end of a sweltering day. I love you, Serena. 
I always cherish our memories together every day. Edward, actually, this isn't working. I think we should stop seeing each other. What? Why? I soon realized that something was wrong with our relationship. I just didn't have the courage to face it. We had a special friendship that I cherished and nurtured, but now I think it's time for me to accept the truth that we're not meant for each other. Bye, Edward. I wish you the best with Rachel. As I stepped out of there, I saw Henry waiting for me, and I instantly felt better. I made up with my mom. She apologized for what she said in her temper and told me that I would always be her real son. Henry, that's brilliant news! Right then, I got a message from Miss Shodden. Serena, I apologized for my behavior. I am most pleased Henry is getting to know such a righteous lawyer in the making. It looks like everything's falling into place. I arrived home, not expecting to see Rachel in a fit of tears. Mom, make her leave! This is all her fault! How dare you bewitch Edward! He's quit tutoring Rachel, and now my poor Rachel is distraught! I will keep on hiring you awful tutors and see how long it takes until you break. Ahem, <laughs> is that so? So Uncle Leon stopped Rachel's allowance and took Aunt Clara's credit cards off her. He also made them apologize to me. I told him about my foundation placement and he was so happy for me and offered to rent me an apartment near the college. It's time to live my dream. Now I just had one thing left to do. Take Henry to visit my hometown with me. This place looks familiar to me. <gasps> I know, I think I came here as a child. Yes, this weird little girl threw a stone at me and then got mad. I suddenly realized Henry was that tourist guy I met when I was 10. Yep, that would be me. Henry seemed surprised, then suddenly pulled me in. I guess some things are just meant to be. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea, but people here call me Fei Fei. Please like and subscribe. My life was extra special because I had two home countries. Even though I was born in China, during our trip to America when I was seven, I got lost from my family. At first, I was really scared and lonely, but the more time I spent in the orphanage, the stronger and more independent I became. It seemed like this place was filled with my greatest childhood memories. Life went on just fine, until I was 15. A miracle happened. Fei Fei! Daddy finally found you! I didn't fully understand how, but tears started streaming down my face. Dad didn't change one bit, but my mom had passed away. So I was introduced to my stepmom, May. Our family's finally reunited. Let's get back to China. I sadly waved my friends goodbye and returned to my home country. We, the Lee family, came from a long line of pottery makers. And this is the fifth generation. Dad said that before his grandparents took their last breath, their dying wish was to preserve the family craft. And as the only granddaughter of the family, I carried the noble responsibility of inheriting this pottery shop. I believe in you. Make us proud. While I was still processing everything, my parents already dragged me to my relative's house for a meet and greet. There must have been 20 people here, and I had to memorize all their names? Grandpa Zhu, Grandma Lian, Uncle Tang, and Aunt... Aunt Hua? Luckily, I still remembered some simple phrases from my childhood and greeted them with my broken Chinese. Then, I heard them talking about a robbery at my house a couple days ago. Dad got a big order to polish 12 vases for the Ming Dynasty but they were nowhere to be found all of a sudden. The customer wanted to press charges, causing a big trouble for our family. The police were involved, but since all cameras were smashed, it was impossible to find the culprit. The detective in me was woken up, so I ran to where my aunts were to eavesdrop. But before I could ask anything, Dad came and dragged me away. It's none of your business, kiddo. Even if the police couldn't solve it yet, focus on learning the trade. A few days later, I started school. And boy, I thought I was smart, but Chinese characters defeated me. For crying out loud, those dancing letters and accents gave me a nightmare, and I was even reprimanded for using English in class. That's not all. Classes were followed immediately by ceramic lessons. Watching ceramic tutorials was fun, but practicing was a hard slap of reality. The more I practiced throwing clay, the more stupid shapes I created. Ugh, and there's clay all over my face and shirt. Clumsy me. Frustrated, I angrily yeeted a piece of clay across the room, then saw Dad glaring at me with his face darkened. Fei Fei just came here. She can't possibly learn that quickly. Give her some time. But Dad coldly dragged me to the ceramic gallery. You know, pottery is about pouring souls into lifeless clay. Your great-grandfather used to make ceramics for the palace during the Qing Dynasty. In wartime, the whole workshop was bombed, but your great-grandparents saved the most precious vases while fleeing the enemy till they died. Dad's words made me realize how hasty and incompetent I was. I had to change. Then Dad introduced me to a guy. This is Cody, my best apprentice, aka Pottery Prodigy. He'll be your teacher. 
Cody's American, so communication was much easier. He's a great teacher who would always patiently fix my work to perfection, despite how many times I messed up. Cody's also friendly and easy to talk to. Some days our deep talks lasted until dawn. One time, while I was preparing the kiln, I accidentally found this half-burnt piece of paper in the corner. It looked not so normal because there was some handwriting that seemed important on it. I showed Cody and he said it could be a Chinese poem, but I couldn't figure out its meaning since most of it was lost. Dad said it was nonsense while my stepmom shook her head in confusion, but it somehow still bothered me. So I kept studying it for a few nights and I might have found a clue that could lead to the mysterious missing 12 phases. But that wasn't enough, so I decided to put it aside for now. Back to my daily routine. I was showered in my neighbor's and relatives' care. A bit too much. They always urged me to get married. When I was your age, I had two children already. <laughs> but I'm not even 18 yet. Worse, they even sent some suitors to my house. I've got a gift for you for our first meeting. This chicken lays a lot of eggs. <laughs> if you marry me, your life will be full of roses. I only have one small request. My family wants many children, so we'll need to have five sons, three daughters, and a pair of twins. They got me dizzy, so I sneaked out the back door to avoid running into another lunatic. <sighs> the countryside sunset looked so peaceful. Arr! Wow, didn't expect such strong pipes from a tiny body. Creepy much? I turned to leave, but suddenly that guy grabbed my ponytail and pulled out my hair tie. I was gonna teach this jerk a lesson, but he somehow dodged every blow. Stand still so I could hit you. Give me a kiss, then I'll give it back. You wish? What a psycho! But somehow, now I and this psycho became friends, and we even got closer and closer after seeing each other every day at school. I realized Kai wasn't as annoying as I thought, and even grew sympathy for him when I learned that he also lost his mother when he was little. As his father was busy running his business, Kai was always unhappy and lonely. Now that he had my company, he cheered me up whenever I was sad and frustrated about not getting better at pottery. However, Cody didn't seem too pleased with this. He appeared out of nowhere and dragged me away. Fate, that guy is a notorious lady killer. Stay away from him. He seems like just a regular dude to me. Okay, to tell you the truth, that guy is from the Wen family, our lifelong nemesis. If your dad knew about this, you're done. I'm a bit concerned, but life isn't a revenge drama. No one can stop me from seeing someone because of some familial feud. Still, I guess I should be careful. Hey, hey, what you hiding? Faye likes a free spirit. A boring guy only plays with clay all day. <clears throat> no chance. Well, I think an innocent girl like Faye needs a calm, mature, and collected guy. Not some free-spirited, spoiled rich boy who only knows how to spend his parents' money. Ah! Every time this happened, I had to throw myself in between them and push them apart. One day, my stepmom caught me coming home after going out with Kai. I panicked and didn't know how to explain, but don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. You're stressed out enough. Then she called me in for a deep talk. She apologized for not giving me enough care and kindly asked if I had any difficulties since returning home. Hmm. Actually, I like pottery, but I haven't improved no matter how hard I worked. The responsibility on my shoulders is so big that it pulls me down. I tried to put up a smile, but there were times that I felt suffocated. Don't push yourself too hard. If it's all too much, take a break and go back to America for a while. A healthy mind comes first and foremost. Wah! <sighs> I'm so lucky to have an understanding stepmother. As soon as she left, Cody stepped out. I didn't know you were under so much pressure. Don't worry, there are other ways to help your family besides making good pottery. You're smart, I know you can do it. So, I started to practice performing tricks with ceramic faces, then set up a TikTok account to upload videos of my performances. They went viral in only a few weeks, gathering millions of views and propelled the pottery shop to fame. And with that, the number of orders grew rapidly. The national pottery competition was coming. My dad excitedly announced that it was a huge opportunity for our family. Our core team worked day and night to create a unique design that would make an impact. The big day finally arrived and I was tasked with carrying the vase to the exhibition area. I was so excited to be there, but a stranger suddenly bumped into me, leaving me in shock for a few seconds. Oh my god, the vase! Panicked, I hurriedly checked and luckily, it's okay. Whew, that was close. The competition officially began. I checked out the other displays. They all looked splendid, but the Wen's family vase literally shocked me to my core. It looked exactly like ours. I went straight there to confront them. This is clearly my family's design. You, you shameless thieves. Watch your mouth, little girl. 
And you? Keep an eye on your daughter. Don't let her bring shame to your family. Don't tell me how to raise my child. And the vase? The thief will soon be exposed. Come on, Faye. I knew the design can be copied, but not the material. It's made with our family's secret technique. We had a special substance that made ceramics more durable. Now we just need a little luck. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner impressed us with its one-of-a-kind design and outstanding quality. The first prize goes to... Wen Family! However, we also found out one team's product is made with substandard material and underfired. The judges also suspect them of plagiarizing the Wen's design. We can't accept such disrespect to the craft. Lee Family, you're disqualified from this competition. Before we could recover from the shock, the news already spread like wildfire. Kai tried to explain that he had nothing to do with this, but I didn't want anything to do with him anymore. The Wen family must have made a copy of our vase and swapped it with ours. But when? It's with me the whole time. It could only be... Our business took a nosedive. Orders were cancelled, most staff quit, and worse still, everyone here suspected that I swapped the vases since some of them saw me with Kai. My dad didn't take that news so well. He had a stroke and was hospitalized ASAP. No, I had to find out the truth, no matter what. Only three people knew the design. Dad, Cody, and me. Right, Cody would know what to do now. Unfortunately, he took some days off to take care of his sick mom, so I decided to come to him again. He'd gone shopping, so his mom welcomed me. Thank you for giving my son a chance and paying him handsomely. Without the money, I might not even be here anymore. <coughs> money? What money? Ah, uh, my son spent sleepless nights for months to complete your vase. Isn't that why you paid him that well? What? We'd never made Cody work overtime. What money is she talking about? Right then, Cody got home. I immediately confronted him. He denied everything at first, but then he had to give in. Who hired you? Really, I don't know. They texted me from a blocked number, then wire transferred me the money. Faye, my mom's really sick and I had no choice. I never expect such terrible consequences. I'm so sorry, Fei Fei. I ran away ASAP. I can't hear another word. The saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from your enemy. When I got home, my stepmom was cooking. Oh my, you look pale. Poor sweetie. I couldn't help but leaped into her arms and burst into tears. She tried to calm me down before bringing dad his food. I know, I cannot be weak anymore. I'll find out who's behind all this. Whatever it takes! I rummaged through the workshop until late, only to find nothing. Exhausted, I went to sit by the gate for some fresh air, and suddenly saw something in the bush. An envelope! Looks fishy. To not leave any trace, I opened it with steam instead of tearing. It's a Chinese poem, and had the same style as the one I found the other day. By reading the first letter in each line, I got this message. Yo, Chang. Jin, Mian, meet at the oil factory, it is. The message coded in the other poem also referred to a place. It's gotta be a sketchy meeting to have its spot written in code like that. I quickly put the letter back and searched for the only oil factory in town, then followed the address to an abandoned factory. I ran straight inside, but it was totally empty. Was I wrong? I felt defeated and was about to leave when I suddenly heard a voice from the second floor. I crept up and saw... Kai's father with a gang wearing black, and our 12 stolen vases! Right then, a hand patted on my shoulder. Whatcha doing? I turn around to see a creepy face, then pitch black. I open my eyes with a splitting headache, and my hands all tied up. Who's this? My stepmother, who's arm in arm with Kai's father? Already awake? You, you're on their side? My father didn't mistreat you. This is how you return the favor? I've had enough of your old man, a tyrant and self-proclaimed smart man. I deserve someone who loves and pampers me, like Mr. Wen here. If your father had been truly smart, he would have realized long ago that he had nurtured a serpent in his bosom. That Cody boy. <laughs> Just wait and see. I will expose your scheming. Ha! <laughs> in your dream! I already bought a plane ticket back to America. Be prepared to be welcomed by another orphanage. I even wrote your old man a touching welfare letter. He'll definitely have another stroke once he reads it. <laughs> the secret letter has exposed you, and other evidence will soon be found. You can't get away with this. Do you mean this, feisty girl? In fact, what letter? <laughs> Just then, the wind blew and swept the burning letter to some old oil containers at the corner, setting it aflame. The fire spread with lightning speed. They all ran for their lives, leaving me behind. The smoke was thick, stinging my eyes. <coughs> I was about to faint when...
Cody kicked the door open, dashed in, and untied me, while Kai covered me with his jacket. You? You? There's no time! Run! Then quickly carried me away from the fire. When we got to safety, the entire factory exploded! Okay, can you two explain everything now? I... I felt guilty about the pottery competition, so I secretly followed my father to find out the truth for you. I came to your house to apologize, but saw you rushing somewhere looking worried. That's why I decided to follow you, and I can't believe that the person hiring me is your stepmother. Me neither. Anyway, thanks. But I'm still mad at you. Are, Are you, you okay, okay now? now? I'm fine. I'm not sure about them, though. Animators, please replay the previous scene. Yep, I managed to record everything. With this priceless evidence, of course my so-called stepmother and Wen had to plead guilty and go to prison. My father was discharged from the hospital, and our 12 ceramic vases were returned. Now that our family's name's cleared, business is booming. After this incident, I learned to cherish our pottery workshop more. Determined to continue my family business, I started learning pottery properly to prepare for next year's competition. Root for me, peeps! And, of course, I still have these two guys by my side. Only, it looks like they no longer want to just be friends with me. What should I do? Please help me by commenting down below if you're hashtag Team Kai or hashtag Team Cody. Hey there, animated story show viewers. I'm Crystal, a model and influencer, and I'm here for the Trend Like This Influencer Awards. Why don't you come on in and get ready with me? I know what you're thinking. I have a unique look. You see, I have vitiligo, a condition that causes pale patches to develop on my skin. It's definitely different, but I don't really see it as a disadvantage, but rather one of my biggest perks in life. Since I was a kid, people have always gawped at me in the street. But luckily, my mom and big sis have always been there to support me. Honey, they're only looking at you that way because you're beautifully different. Yeah, Crystal, never doubt yourself. You're one of a kind. Thanks to them, I've grown to adore the way I look. Then one time, while we were walking in the park, this eccentric-looking man approached me. Oh my word, your skin! It's a masterpiece! Turns out, he was Bo Ivanov, the world-renowned photographer. He begged me to model for him, and with the encouragement of my mom and sis, I agreed, and my photos became a viral hit. That's when my interest in modeling sparked. I joined this awesome modeling agent and got to learn all poses for photo shoots, wear these gorgeous outfits, and best of all, have makeup done to complement my vitiligo, not to hide it. Ever since then, I've worked my butt off, fully committed to my work. That's how I became the face of multiple fashion brands and built up my influence empire. I wanted to pave the way for people like me to love themselves and celebrate our own uniqueness. Cause look at me, my career, my life could come to this point today, all thanks to my skin. And I wouldn't change it for the world. But then this morning came, I woke up to see, yeah, my vitiligo patches, they were gone. This can't be happening. I still have tons of fashion shows and events booked for the rest of the year. Without my patches, will they all cancel on me? Panicked, I called my manager, Alex, and she immediately rushed into my apartment. This shouldn't have happened. The project with Red Rush is next week. I know that. What can I do? Go see a dermatologist? No, Crystal. You can't breathe a word about this to anyone. You don't want to ruin your career, do you? Well, no, but I can't hide inside forever. No, you can't. But you can fake your patches. Just use makeup. Draw some on. What? You mean I should lie to everyone? Your choice. It's either that or kiss goodbye to your career. This is wrong, I know, but I've worked so hard for this. I couldn't just give up now. I guess the foundation would have to make do. I went back to my daily modeling life, and luckily no one seemed to suspect anything. But I was so on edge and constantly checking my makeup. Crystal, have you heard? The brand Rarus is looking for models with unconventional features for its newest fashion collection. You're the perfect fit! OMG! Everyone who's anyone in fashion knew of the Rarus' creator, Mr. Finnegan. If I become his muse, that's my step into high fashion world! I can't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity! I got my focus straight, fearlessly walking into the building, when suddenly my heel got stuck. I tumbled backward and out of nowhere, these strong arms wrapped around me and I landed straight into their warm embrace. For a moment there, I could feel their divine scent overpowering me. Hmm, Dior Sauvage, isn't it? You don't change much, do you? Still clumsy even though you're now a superstar. Hold up. This voice, it's Sam, my high school ride or die. My, my, puberty has hit him hard, huh? Samuel knelt down and gently put the heel back on my foot. Yep, my heart was definitely flipping out of my chest. You're going in for the casting, right? 
Oh, um, yes. But how do you know? I'm one of the judges. I gotta go now. Break a leg. Uh, but not literally. Wow, Samuel's made a name for himself already. Impressive. Wait, Crystal, you're here for work. And now time to shine. I strutted my way along the catwalk, doing my signature twist-turn pose at the end of it. As expected, all the judges were mesmerized. This job was in the bag. Just then, everyone went ooh and awe at the girl next in line. It's Amanda! She's known as the super rookie, who challenges the modeling world's standards. Ironically, that title once belonged to me, but that's how this industry works. You can easily be dismissed if not careful. We got the results right after the casting. As expected, I was in for the show. Hooray! Hey, Crystal, right? Amanda, huge fan of yours. Say, can a pro like you give this rookie any advice while we train together? You do know this is a competition, right? That means no help. Then I shimmied off. Day one of the training and I already messed up. I had to disguise myself to sneak out and buy a new one. Crisis averted, but this did make me 30 minutes late. You're the professional. Act like one so us amateur can look up to. A veteran in modeling. Or so they say. Those chicks wouldn't miss the chance to dethrone me, especially her. Welcome, everyone. May I introduce you to our Fall 2023 Haute Couture Collection. It is inspired by the elegant art of ballet. So besides your usual training, you'll have a chance to learn some of the moves to capture its true essence. Then I'll pick my star, my vedette. Ballet? I hadn't done that since the accident. Little six-year-old me was having a ballet performance and had to do this crazy spinning technique. But somehow, I ended up twirling like a humming top, then face-planted right on the stage. I never forget the audience's mocking waves of laughter. No, get yourself together, Crystal. Whatever the challenge is, I'll succeed and rock the vedette position. The first lesson was catwalk. Easy peasy, no one came close to matching me. Good posture, excellent posing. Well done, Crystal. Oh, he's so sweet. Can we just take a break to admire this piece of art? Come on, why are you so shy today, Crystal? Your patches are superb. <laughs> Except they're just the magic of makeup. But the nightmare had only just begun. Jeez, these clothes were way too tight. They got me melting like the witch from The Wizard of Oz. Gotta go touch up. Then during another session, I couldn't keep my balance and was wobblier than a jellyfish. Meanwhile, Amanda effortlessly executed all those moves. A few days later, Mr. Finnegan organized a photo shoot, which we had to pose like a ballerina on this revolving platform. The past trauma immediately rushed back into my head. I stepped onto the platform shaking like a leaf. Only with Samuel holding my hands could I imagine to do the simplest pose. At least it's over now. My, my, our pro seems a little rusty, doesn't she? Just step back and let one of us younger girls take care of this. Right, Amanda? Go practice, Xena. Amanda stepped up to the platform. Her body started moving like a real swan. Gorgeous, Amanda. You're as graceful as the ballerina in the musical box. That's it. I think we got the shot. Well done. The whole set erupted in applause, and Amanda was the center of attention. Looks like you could learn a thing or two from your junior. Look, I may not be the best ballerina out there, but I'll show them where 1,000% efforts get me in life. So I stayed later after the training to practice more, starting with stretching. Ouch, not as easy as it looked. Okay, let's try again. Just have to raise my leg and... Whoa, whoa! Okay, this time it has to work. And now the hardest part, sur le point. Uh-oh. Just then, Samuel appeared, trying to catch me, but we both ended up stumbling on the floor. Don't try too hard. You may hurt yourself. It's just, the vedette means a lot to me. I know you can do it. You've been such a positive influence, and I know that energy can get you what you want. No, my patches. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's okay. I crossed the line. I'll just leave now. Don't, please. If you only knew the truth, you wouldn't think so highly of me. Hey, what's wrong? You can talk to me, you know. Just then, the lights brightened around us. What are you two doing here at this hour? Samuel looked startled and immediately kept his distance from me. Nothing. I saw Crystal practicing. Thought I could give her some advice. That's not fair. I need some too. What do you think of my releve? They started laughing together like a married couple. Since when did they get so close? After a few days of intense practice, I may not be a ballet master yet, but I did feel more confident about facing the final challenge, which decided who would be the vedette. Look at this gorgeous couture design. I would make a perfect black swan. I tried the dress on, but accidentally smudged the foundation and got it all over the dress. Oh no! I immediately rushed to the bathroom trying to wash the stain off. Stupid foundation. Super stain my butt. 
The door suddenly snapped open and in stepped, Amanda, you, your vitiligo patches, they're coming off? And what are you doing with the dress? I tried to hide it, but she already snatched it away from me. Is it foundation stain? Did you fake your vitiligo? No, no, I was diagnosed with vitiligo for real, I, I swear. I told her the truth, thought she was going to use it against me, but to my surprise, she looked heartbroken. I decided to pursue modeling because I felt inspired by you, but now you're telling me it's all a scam? How could you? Amanda, wait, please. I, I thought you were against me. Does it matter anymore? Now that I got a taste of the truth, you don't deserve my respect. I was at an utter loss for words. I'd been so wrapped up in fear of losing my career that I couldn't care less how my action could affect those who looked up to me. I'm nothing more than a hypocrite. I couldn't live like this anymore. Vitiligo or not, I had to stay true to who I am. I walked straight up to the judges panel and wiped all my foundation away right in front of them. Mr. Finnegan, I no longer fit in your collection. The truth is, my vitiligo has gone. I no longer have any unconventional features. Thus, I'm here to announce that I will cut myself from the show. I'm deeply sorry for all the trouble I caused. I turned to walk out the door, but there stood Samuel. Crystal, I don't understand. I'm sorry, Sam. I'm not the person you think I am. I ran home, hid under the blanket, and cried myself to sleep. Suddenly, a call from my manager woke me up. How can you sleep at this hour? The press is going wild. They're calling you an attention-seeking fraud. I immediately came to my senses and looked up the news. Oh no, how could it break out so fast? At this speed, I'd be canceled by tomorrow morning. See what happens when you act out of my order? Gosh, you models are so dumb. Don't go anywhere. I'll be there to handle this. Was she being for real? All of this was her idea in the first place. Enough! Have fun dealing with this on your own, Alex. I shut down my phone, packed my stuff, and left it all behind to go to my secret place. I used to spend time here with my family when I was a kid. Being surrounded by nature calms me down. Suddenly a hand pressed on my shoulder. Hey, we've been looking for you. Samuel? And Amanda? Did you guys follow me here? It's the only way we could find you. I'm sorry for going at you like that. I was so shocked. You don't have to. It's all my fault. I lost myself when my vitiligo went away. I acted out of fear and ended up disappointing everyone who's counting on me. <sighs> well, it's hard to stay sane when your identity is taken from you. But what's important is you've learned your lesson. Now, where is the fearless, confident crystal we all love? She's right. Patches or not, you're always special to us. That means a lot to me. Thanks, you guys. Turns out, I'd misunderstood Amanda this whole time. She's brilliant, gorgeous, and caring. And perfect for Samuel. Welp, that stings. Suppose it's time I got back to work for some damage control. I opened the phone to see hundreds of notifications. Among them was a message from Mr. Finnegan, saying he has a place for me at the fashion show. So it's not the end for me, right? Go get it, girl. Yes, it felt so good to be back. Crystal, you're here. I have great news. You'll be the vedette for this collection. Me? But I don't have any unconventional features. Doesn't matter. You're perfect the way you are. Two girls will stand by your side, and you'll be in the center wearing this work of art. An elegant swan among the flock of ugly ducks. Isn't that a bit offensive? So this was your plan all along? Playing dirty tricks to save your flopped career? Cut it, Xena. Mocking me won't change the situation. There's something fishy going on here, and I'm gonna get to the end of it. Finally, the show has come. As soon as I got the signal, I strutted to the runway confidently, turning heads to my every step. But it's not for the reason you're thinking. I actually switched places with Amanda, and now all the spotlights are on her. Right at that moment, Mr. Finnegan bolted to the runway. What do you think you're doing? You ruined my show. I had a deal with her. I... What deal? Tell me. Right now. I... It's her who's behind this. Alex? Ugh, that snake! It turned out Alex bribed Mr. Finnegan to let me be the vedette and drag the models with unconventional features down since I'm no longer one of them. Hearing that, all the models turned furious, ready to jump at the two frauds. You two have crossed the line. I don't need any of your manipulative games to continue my career. I will stay true to myself no matter what. Unconventional features or not, I'm always willing to speak up for them because everyone is beautiful in their own way and they deserve a chance to showcase their beauty to the world. The audience erupted in cheers and applause while Mr. Finnegan and Alex were surrounded by cameras and criticism. Justice served.
After all that drama, I'm still modeling, but with a different agency that fully accepts me for the real me. I continued to influence young people on self-love and being uniquely themselves. Amanda and I became the best of friends. We also made tons of plans to collaborate with Samuel. But honestly, I couldn't shake off this heart-wrenching feeling whenever these two were together. Luckily, my hectic schedule has left me no time to think about that. Guess what? After days and nights of hard work, I now have my own line of skincare products called Only You. Exciting, right? Oh, Sam, you made it! Wow, they're beautiful. Amanda will love them. Uh, no, they're not for Amanda. They're for you. Crystal, I... I'm crazy about you. I always have been. What? It's me you like all along? Then why didn't you tell me that before, silly? I leaped into his arms, and we shared the most amazing kiss. Perfect ending for an amazing journey, huh? Hey guys, my name is Leah. A typical nerdy girl and a huge fan of Ace. The most talented, brilliant, incredible actor ever. But in the limelight, I transform into Aubrey Fern, the glamour star of the hottest movie right now. Follow me crush with the real life Ace. How is it possible? Well, I just got really, really lucky. That day, I was walking home from college when I suddenly felt like someone was following me. Hmm, this sketchy guy was definitely up to no good. So I changed my route through this stinky alley, trying to lose him. But he stayed relentless and chased after me. So, you've chosen death then. When he was ten feet away, I picked up a trash can and dumped it on his head, grabbed a golf club nearby and started smashing non-stop. You creep! You mess with the wrong, innocent, helpless little girl! Stop! Who are you calling creep? I'm an artist manager from Moon Entertainment. Wait, Moon Entertainment? As an Ace's management label? Then why didn't you say so? Turns out his name was Grayson, and he's not here for my angelic voice or charismatic dance moves, but guess what? For my face. <laughs> this guy must be a comedian. A few days ago, you used the celebrity twin filter on TikTok, and the result was Aubrey Fern, an actress under our management, correct? Uh, yeah. Moon Entertainment actually created that filter. We were looking for someone who looks just like Aubrey to replace her. Okay, I must have hit his head too hard. I'd better get away from him quick. But he caught me right away and immediately teleported me to the company headquarters. Even the CEO himself came to welcome me. They were dead serious about me filling Aubrey's shoes. Heck! Her whole identity. Apparently, the actress found showbiz too stressful and decided to quit. But she was one of the top faces of the company, so they couldn't just let her disappear. Out of nowhere, the door swung open and entered Ace. He rushed towards me, genuinely concerned, and gently dabbed my nose dry with his own sleeve. So, this is who I'll be dating? Looking forward to that. W what d d d dating that's right, Leah. I've just released a statement of Ace and Aubrey dating. People are going wild. As the new Aubrey, you'll get a once-in-a-lifetime chance to be Ace's girlfriend. Just for show, of course. But who knows? He seems into you. I... I think I just hit the jackpot! Aubrey 2.0, here she comes! The next day, I arrived at a top beauty salon for a celebrity makeover. From the shine of my hair to the size of my pores, everything had to be flawless. And you wouldn't believe how many designer outfits and jewelry I got to try on. I look like a million bucks. Ace was gonna freak out the next time he saw me. You may look like Aubrey, but your personality needs some work. Jeez, who spat in your coffee this morning? Anyway, you better tidy up, cause I'm moving into your house. What? No way! You and your spiteful mouth should stay ten feet away from me, or else I'll call security. Huh. Guess what, Miss Diva? It says right here in the contract that your manager, aka me, has to supervise you 24-7 so you don't spill anything confidential. You're bluffing. Am I, though? I stared at the contract, too stunned to speak. Why did I sign without reading it first? The guy's a nightmare. He even pretended to be an Italian exchange student and followed me to class. Weirdly, all the girls on campus were gushing over his fake accent. Say un porco. <laughs> I don't know what's more pathetic, his Italian accent or that you guys are actually swooning for that. Uh-oh, these girls did not know how to take a joke. Whoa, you guys wouldn't want to touch my face. My contract says it's worth, but before I could say another word, Grayson dragged me away like a rag doll. Other than that, life as Aubrey was amazing. I got to appear on loads of magazine covers, attended a bunch of exclusive events, and starred in the most anticipated rom-com of the year. And you know what the best part was? Ace was right by my side. 
Imagine being this close to your idol every day. You could just fall head over heels for him, literally. But no worries, people would still think that you're cute, as long as you know how to pose for the camera. One time, I heard A say that his ideal type is a girl with healthy, sun-kissed skin. So I figured I should give Tanning a try. But when I arrived at the film set the next day, everyone laughed at me, saying I looked like a half-dried up squid. This was so humiliating. But Grayson had a blast making fun of me. But instead, he rushed to put his jacket over my head to cover me up. Why are you trying so hard for that narcissist? You look ridiculous. I think she looks kind of cute. Just needs a bit of blending. It's Ace! He's standing up for me! His handsome face suddenly came super close to mine. Care to go on a date with me tonight? Yes, 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 a million times yes! I immediately went home after work, scrubbed off the stupid tanning lotion, and got ready at lightning speed! We're meeting at this private restaurant on the 32nd floor of a luxurious building. And there Ace was, the brightest star amongst the city lights waiting for me. He was so gentle and sweet. We were having the best time. His dreamy eyes looked at me like he was about to say something. Something sweet, I can sense it. When flashlights came from nowhere, blinding us. Paparazzi? How did they get in here? Aubrey, is it really you in the picture? Ace, what does it feel like being cheated on? What are they talking about? Just then, a strong arm suddenly grabbed my waist and pulled me out of the crazy crowd. It was Grayson. I'd never felt happier seeing his grumpy face. We got into the van, and Grayson showed us his article of me kissing a random guy at a beach resort. What? This must have been photoshopped. We gotta clear this up. Ace didn't listen to my words. His face was twitching in anger. Do you have any idea how this affects my career? Me being cheated on? That's just pathetic. Pull over. I need to get out. I can't stand you right now. He slammed the door shut, then stormed off. I was speechless. I'd never seen this scary and mean sight of him before. Don't mind him. He can be a real douchebag sometimes. I'll get you some ice cream, then we'll go home, okay? Grayson's words cheered me up. I'm honestly touched by this cold hands, warm heart kind of guy. Grayson tried his best to shield me from the public backlash, but it was all for nothing. As Moon Entertainment let false rumors spread like wildfire, now Aubrey, aka me, was being badmouthed everywhere. A tramp? A bimbo? Some even said I was a stain in Ace's career. That's it. I couldn't do this anymore. I launched into the CEO's office ready to give him a piece of my mind, but he was just chilling with Ace. Leah, just the person I'm looking for. I'm about to make an announcement stating Aubrey is not the one in the picture, and you and Ace are still deeply in love. No thanks. I'm here to quit. This pressure is all too much. Now, now, calm down. Maybe a nice trip to the City of Love will help you relax, right, Ace? Of course. Let staff fix this while we take a break and maybe get to know each other better. Come on, I'll drive you home. The last time we met, Ace went bonkers on me, and now he's being as nice as pie. Talk about Jekyll and Hyde. Suddenly, he stopped the car at the riverbank and turned to me. Leah, I was wrong to take it out on you. I've never faced high pressure like that before, and I... I lost my mind. And you know what? That night, I was about to speak from my heart. I love you, Leah. He pulled me in for a kiss. It was so out of the blue, I, I didn't even know what to think. But then he opened his eyes and looked at me, so in love, I couldn't help but give in. Baby, I can't wait to be with you in Paris. It was everything I'd ever wanted, right? That night, Moon Entertainment finally cleared out the rumor. That's not all. Pictures of Ace and I kissing were making the headlines. How did they get this picture? Those paparazzi are so sneaky. I was so perplexed and for some reason kept thinking about Grayson and how he would feel hearing this news. I came to the roof to see him sitting deep in thought. Hey, haven't you heard? They cleared up my scandal. Remember, that's not your scandal, Leah. Don't let Moon Entertainment manipulate your life. You don't trust them? Yeah, and I don't trust Ace either. It's got nothing to do with Ace. He's my boyfriend for real now. Plus, we're going to Paris for a romantic break. Grayson let out a solemn sigh. I guess he was just trying to protect me from the company. But he didn't need to protect me from Ace, right? He still went with us to Paris and lingered in the background with a stone-cold face. I was embracing this moment with Ace, and as we strolled together, a group of fangirls recognized him and flocked around us. One of them even held him back, crying like a lunatic. Ace, don't you miss me? You promised! What are you talking about? Leave me alone. He pushed the girl aside, then dashed out of the crowd. I tried to follow him, but a hand suddenly snatched mine. 
It was a girl burying her face under a mask and pair of sunglasses. She snuck a USB into my hand and said, Ace's darkest secrets are in here. You're scaring me. What do you want? The girl tried to reply, but Grayson cut in between us and pulled me away. We ran and ran under the sunlight of a spring day in Paris. Why was this single moment way more romantic than anything I had with Ace, my idol? Could it be that I have fallen for Grayson? Grayson took me back to the hotel, looking somber as he turned to leave. At that moment, I realized I didn't want to let him go. He was the only one who understood me and got me through this crazy double life, not Ace. Neither he nor his celebrity lifestyle suit me. Ace would be better off without me in the way of his stardom. Grayson had tried warning me many times. Maybe the girl in the mask knows something. I plugged the USB into my laptop and a video popped up on the screen. There's proofs of Moon Entertainment manipulating the media all these years to cover up for Ace's scandalous private life. Dark things us fans have never seen before. His anger issues, his drinking problem, his cheating scandal. I scrolled down to see a dozen pictures of him with different girls kissing. And they're not just random girls, but it's actual fans. I know them. Look, it's the crying girl this afternoon. And this one is a well-known admin of one of his fan sites. This was unbelievable. He'd been playing his entire fandom for fools. Mm -hmm. Right then, I heard grunting sounds coming from the balcony. Someone was trying to climb into my room. Wait, the stranger who gave me the flash drive? For all I knew, she could be a dangerous stalker. Given all this proof she somehow had... Panicked, I grabbed the USB, ran straight to Grayson's room, calling for help. His door opened just as a stalker reached us. He hit me behind his back and faced that crazy masked girl. Better not make another move or you'll be locked up in jail right this minute. The girl stopped, hands in the air. The moment we took off her disguise, I was shocked to the core. It was Aubrey. I know this seems crazy, but please listen to me. What you saw in that USB is the truth. Ace's manager provided me with it. What USB? And you didn't choose to leave the industry? The CEO even made all the staff delete your contacts and basically erase your existence. That snake has been lying to you all this time. I didn't quit. I just wanted a little time off to deal with my mental health. So I went on a digital detox for a while. When I came back, I found out I was already fired without a reason and replaced by a lookalike. I was so devastated I didn't know what to do. Luckily, Ace's manager reached out to help me. He's witnessed Ace's true face and he despised it. But Moon Entertainment's trapped him in a contract lasting till the end of Ace's career. There's no way out for him until now. His manager has been secretly collecting and sending me evidence, then told me to come to you, because you're also one of their victims. Just like us. Gosh, this was unbelievably messed up. You know where he went after our encounter this afternoon? I shook my head in confusion, as she showed me a video of Ace making out with one of the girls earlier at a party. How could he be so shameless? Did us fans look like fools to him? No need to hesitate anymore. I'll take this douche down, in the name of his devoted fandom. I went on to play Ace's girlfriend both in the movies and in real life, while Aubrey used my identity to find a new part-time job as a monitoring staff at the National Broadcasting Station, the organizers of this year's Movie Sensation Awards. No way Ace wouldn't attend, since he was nominated for Best Leading Actor. Poor guy. He has no idea what's in store for him. <laughs> and there Aubrey is. With the help of Grayson, no one even notices we've switched back. I've also managed to earn Aubrey the host position for this year's award. Now take a seat. The show has begun. And the best leading actor goes to... Ace! Classic Ace played out his surprised and emotional act when he got on stage. I would like to thank my fans for the support they've given me all these years. I'd be nothing without them. Yeah, right. Now, Mike? Off. Lights. Off. Here's the evening's main event. Ace's true face as a deceitful womanizer. Everyone gasped and started whispering. I shine a spotlight on the audience and a girl stands up. I'm one of the girls in those pictures. He told all of us girls he and Aubrey are just a publicity stunt so that we would date him in secret. I was his photographer once and he literally screamed at me for 20 minutes because I didn't get his good angle. I'm a bartender at his frequented bar where he gets wasted, hits on girls, and starts fighting with random guys every day. The audience start booing and throwing things at Ace. The cherry on top is that this whole fiasco is being broadcasted live worldwide. It's safe to say no one will ever be fooled by this douchebag again. Which means my work here is done. I go outside to see paparazzi and fans swarming around Aubrey. She handles them so gracefully it looks effortless. The limelight isn't for me, and that's fine. I'm glad I'm back to being a normal girl who doesn't have to care about public opinion. 
Best part is, I get to date my idol manager boyfriend over there. I'm thinking a nice home-cooked dinner to celebrate our successful plan. And our one-month anniversary as well. What do you think?